Good evening, church. Good evening. Okay. It's going to take me a minute to get used to that one, I think. So I, I got to tell you, it's amazing to be here with each and every one of you tonight. Friends and family, everyone, it's great to see you. Thanks so much for being here. If any of you were here last night, you'll know that Reverend Jermaine Green told us about the Marys who were present at Jesus' tomb, keeping vigil over Jesus' body. Tonight we have a different account, we have Matthew's account, where we have two Marys present to check on the body of Jesus, but they are interrupted by an earthquake and the appearance of an angel telling them, do not be afraid for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. Jesus is not here, for Jesus has been raised, as he said. So I must tell you that it's quite an honor to be giving the message on this day and during this Easter Vigil service. I think most of you all here know that I'm very much a Christmas person. I am. But I do have a secret, and that is that this service right here tonight, the Easter Vigil Mass, if you will, has always been my favorite service. Yes. From when I was a kid attending this service at Catholic Church, to being an altar boy participating in the service, until now at NCCNY celebrating with all of y'alls, this is my favorite. You know, all of the beautiful chants, there's fire, and in my childhood tradition, lots of incense. So there's nothing not to like. And also, the service is all about the beginnings, the beginnings of life and the new beginnings of life. It's about covenants and promises, and we are here tonight to be reminded that God loves us. Mm -hmm. The love there is for each and every one of us is what tonight is about. Mm. God that is love, was love, and always will be love, loves us. Mm -hmm. All of us. Yeah. We were made exactly as we are, and we are loved by God for who we are. Mm -hmm. And there is with us God at all times, yes. helping us and guiding us to be who we are called to be. Amen. Who we were made to be. That's right. The person God has always known us to be. Mm. That's what I want us to be thinking about tonight as we sit here in this church, but also sit in this pause between the morning and reflection on loss and struggle from Good Friday and the great celebration of Easter we will have tomorrow morning. Right now, I want us to focus on us mm. and focus on love and the power of that love, yes. but also to think, what is asked of us? Mm -hmm. What are we to do with the love that is so freely given to us? That's right. What is it for? Mm. And what is it all about? Mm -hmm. Well, I have a story. Okay. You know, the past few months, we, my family and I, have been dealing with some house catastrophes, if you will. You know, we started one little thing, and it led to lots of little things, and then lots of big issues essentially turning our house into one renovation project nightmare after another. It's kind of spun out of control and been overwhelming. But before any of these catastrophes began, we had this great idea to get a local artist to paint murals in the kids' rooms. So we commissioned Philomena Jack, who is an awesome artist and activist that lives upstate, not too far from us, and she does murals throughout the region. So she came out and painted murals for Nolan Emery. Emery commi commissioned Stitch the Disney character eating a popsicle while riding a unicorn over a rainbow. <laughs> Very fitting for Emery. And Noel, a Minecraft-esque pix pixelation of Baby Yoda. Very fitting for Noel. The paintings were fantastic, but very shortly after the paintings went up, the walls started coming down. Literally. A little work revealed big issues, and before we knew it, the old lap and plaster walls, was, it was separating from the studs. It all crumbled away. We watched the rainbow and unicorn 
slowly crumbled off the wall, and in no time there was no stitch, no unicorn, no rainbow, just a pile of rubble. Very colorful rubble, but rubble nonetheless. Now we were very upset about this for many reasons, and of course as it goes we would be seeing the artist in a social setting right after this happened, so we were a little nervous to tell her about what had happened. But we told her, and she was upset, but not about the lost art. She said how she was sad that we had to go through this, that this must be really difficult, but the murals weren't a big deal, and she could always paint them again. And we were surprised, and we asked, can you really stomach doing this again, creating this art, the exact same thing you did all over again, to have to do it right now? And she responded, hey, I'm a street artist. People will literally spray paint over my art as I'm working on it. It happens. And she continued, but really, we are all sandcastles. Mm. We are all sandcastles. Wow. It really got me. You know, it's been stuck somewhere between my head and my heart, this idea of us all being sandcastles. Mm -hmm. And on the surface, it obviously speaks to our innate, temporary nature, but to me it works so well to explain life, really, yeah. and our interactions with the world. Mm. Thinking of each and every one of us as this temporary structure. That's right. Beautiful, but temporary. That's right. With the knowledge, though, mm. that we can always be changed, mm -hmm. and we can always be rebuilt. Yeah. Oh. We can be made again in totally new ways. Wow. Using the sand that is there with us, mm. and all around us. Mm -hmm. Everything to be everything we want to be mm. is right there. Yes, it is. Provided on the beach that is life. Mm. The sand and water required mm. to firm us up is there. Mm. The buckets and shovels and trowels to shape us are all right there. Oh, but it's not without its challenges. Mm. It's not without its struggles, mm -hmm. right? right? We probably have all built a sandcastle or two at some point in our lives, right? Mm -hmm. And we know that sandcastles are not always safe. They're not safe from changing tides, big siblings, or careless strangers. Mm. A place that is once safe for a sandcastle may later no longer be safe. Mm -hmm. Tides change. Yes, they do. And those tides may wash away parts of the castle. Mm. The sun moves mm -hmm. and may dry out a part of the castle. That may lead to crumbling, but there is always the possibility to rebuild and recreate. Yes, it is. And that right there, mm. I believe, is very much what we are to remember and think about on this Easter vigil. Yes, yes, that there is yes. nothing that can't be done with love mm. and a God that is love. Mm. And it may not always feel that way. Actually, it mm. may feel the complete opposite way most times. It may feel like the whole sandcastle is crumbling. Or it may feel like there isn't even a purpose or reason for the sandcastle to be on the beach. Because, you know, look at all those other sandcastles. You know, the bigger sandcastle, the more beautiful sandcastle, the more ornate, maybe the more accomplished sandcastle. Who needs the sandcastle, I may even ask. Who needs the sandcastle who struggles to keep all the sand together, who struggles to hydrate, who struggles to keep the moat around just enough to keep safe and sound. Wow. But I'm here tonight to tell you that God needs and wants that sandcastle. We know that from our stories we've been sharing and retelling all week long. And I need and want to be the castle right next to you on the beach of life. Mm -hmm. Together, all of our sandcastles make up the beautiful but troubled and ultimately very amazing world. Each little sandcastle. Mm. Each sandcastle is loved and wonderful mm -hmm. and perfect. That's right. From the beginning to the end and all the way through new beginnings, each sandcastle and each one of us is loved. And that to me is the point of this gospel tonight. Really probably the point of all of these stories. That there is nothing 
that can hold Jesus down. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that can stop Jesus. Right. Not people, mm -mm. not politics, mm -mm. not death, That's right. nothing. Mm. There's nothing that can stop the love that is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Nothing that can stop the love that is God. Mm -hmm. And that's the point. We need to know and remember that always. Yes, we do. When it's easy to remember that, and probably even more so when it's hard to remember That's that. right. And we are to know that there is nothing that can hold us down when we have love. Nothing that can ever hold us down mm -hmm. with Jesus, mm -hmm. even when that road is hard mm -hmm. or slow mm -hmm. and difficult. Yeah. We can always rebuild. Mm -hmm. We can make the sandcastle everything we can imagine it to be. Yes, we can. And even things we can't imagine it mm -hmm. to be. Right? Yeah. Because, hey, I got ordained tonight. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm a clergy person in an LGBTQIA plus church. Mm -hmm. I could have never imagined it. That's right. That's right. That's right. I mean, really, when I left my Catholic church that I grew up in, I had no idea a church like this, a church like ours, even existed. And if I did know that, I would have never thought I'd be up here preaching as Reverend Mike. Never in a million years could I have even imagined this. But you know what? God did. Mm -hmm. God knew and knows what we can do even when we don't know it. Yes, that's right. And as long as we are open uh -huh. and willing, uh -huh. we have the ability to realize with all of the love of all of these things, mm. the things that we could have never imagined. Mm. Things big, okay. things small, mm -hmm. that's what love can do. Love can make each and every one of us so much more than we could have ever imagined. Woo. Love can make a sandcastle as great as Cinderella's castle at Disney World, and perhaps and hopefully just as despised by Ron DeSantis. <laughs> That's what love, in all its beautiful forms, can do. But there's another really important part of the gospel story tonight. And I want us to talk about that and realize its importance and what it means for us after knowing everything we just said. And it's this part right here. Come see the place where Jesus lay. Then go quickly and tell the disciples, Jesus has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell the disciples. That was told to women, in this telling, two women, two Marys. But it is to women that it is first revealed. It's an important detail at this time. And not only is it revealed to them, but the message immediately is to go and tell others. Mm. Spread the message. Right. Let others know what happened. They witnessed this fantastical event full of earthquakes and angels. Jesus resurrected. And the takeaway isn't, wow, that's a great show. Now you know. You know, it's not the two Marys being excited about having the knowledge. There's no good for you. Keep that and be the smartest person in the room. No. The message is to go quickly and tell. And they do this knowing that they may not be believed. Knowing that they will tell people things that seem crazy and unbelievable. Unrealistic. Knowing that others may not agree with them. But they go quickly and they tell. Go quickly and tell. Go quickly and be. Go quickly and live as the good news. Mm -hmm. Filled with fear and great joy. Mm. That's how they left. That's how they spread the message. And that probably feels exactly right for that moment, right? We know that feeling of fear, but of great joy. Uh -huh. I mean, that's what I'm feeling right now. Uh -huh. So, you know... It makes sense, but it can be overwhelming, perhaps. Mm -hmm. But that's the kind of awesome sort of stuff that makes up life. Yes. You know, with our knowledge, 
We go forward with fear and great joy. Right. And we make change mm -hmm. and difference. And together we can make things anew. Yeah. It's not enough for us to know that God loves us mm. and that God is love. Mm -hmm. It's not enough to know that our sandcastle has everything it needs to be everything it wants to be. It's not enough. That's missing a big part of this picture. We can't just keep that knowledge to ourselves. That's not the point. That's not what this is about. Our point is to share it. Yes. Our call is to be for others. It's about others, really. We're called to be that light and love for others in other people's lives. We're called to spread goodness and the healing and powerful news that love accomplishes so much. Mm. We're called to be that good news mm. our very selves. We are. Each and every one of us. Mm. It's a challenge. It is. But it's our challenge to know and then to be that for others. It's that part we must remember. We have to remember that we, like the Marys in the story today, we are the chosen ones. We're chosen to know things, chosen to know the power of love, the life-changing power of love. Mm -hmm. And that's awesome. Yes. It's awesome that us, from many backgrounds, from many different places, that I've met in different points in my life, you know, we've had different struggles and disappointments, different accomplishments. Us, from our defeats and successes, and us, as others try to hold us down, try to take things away from us, and try to make us and our people feel like less than the beloved children of God that we are. Us, you, me, we. We are called to let people know what we know. We are called to let people know about love and to lean into it. Filled with fear and great joy, lean into what we know and what we believe, knowing that love is what can change everything. Knowing that we are all sandcastles, but also knowing that we have all the parts required to build again and again, and build together a beautiful sand world. Mm. Or maybe just together build a beautiful world. Mm -hmm. I think we can do it. Me too. It's not going to be easy, mm. but it's our call. Yes. So today and always, I think we should go forward filled with great fear and joy and make a different world. Amen. Amen.